In this video we'll look at the standard normal distribution, look at z-scores and their probability or area for them either to the left, right, or in between. And then we'll look at a distribution that doesn't have, a, that doesn't have standardized data. So we'll have a different mean and a standard deviation. All right, let's look at this first problem, 0.86. It says the area to the left of that we want to find. Okay, well what does that mean? Well, here I have three examples. There's a z-score that they're going to give us, and we want to find the area to the left. In this example, it says x is less than or equal to 1.5 and equal to 0.933. That's the probability or area to the left in red. The area to the right would be this one, and it's a greater than or equal to, right? 0.0668. And in between, it's in between two z values. Here it is, probability in between. Now, if you were to find it individually, you'd have an uh, area to the left of z4, which would include all of this, just like that. And then you would have an area to the left of z3. And you would subtract off that area left of z3. So then that area would become white, and you'd just have in between. So back to this problem. Let's do it by the book first. It says 0.86, and I click this, and I look for 0.86 on the z table. You'll notice the z table always shows area to the left. So I go down to 0 0.86, 0 0.8, it starts with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Point, so it says 0 0.8051, 0 0.8051. And that's exactly, I'll scroll up to make sure you're right, 0 0.86, 0 0.86, yep. So that's how you find it in the chart. It's a little cumbersome to kind of go through it, but it shows the area to the left. Now let's take out StatCrunch. Click Standard up on top. Mean is 0 and standard deviation 1. It's a standardized normal curve. We want to the left. Make sure that's less than. And put our, area, or our z value in, 0 0.86. Hit Compute, 0.8051 and that shows the area to the left. Nice picture of it. So that's the probability of this occurring. Okay. Let's go to another example. This one is to the right of 0.88. We're going to be looking at something like this. Let's look at the chart here. Click the first one. Is 0.88 on it? Nope, those are the negative values. Go to the positive values, 0.88. Down to 0.8. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, point eight one zero six. Now, why isn't that the answer? Because the chart shows the area to the left. Right? The chart shows the area to the left. So in order to get the answer, we need point eight one zero six. We need to take 1 minus that. The whole area under the chart is 1, and we're looking at the area to the left, so we want the area to the right. 1 minus, turn it on, 1 minus 0 0.8106, 0 0.1894. So using the chart is a little more challenging there. you got to remember it shows the area to the left. If we go up and get stack crunch though, mean 0, standard deviation 1, to the right of 0.88. 1.894. Super fast, showing the probability to the right of that. Third, let's look at an in-between. Let's look at this one here down here, negative 0.61 and 1.29. Let's do it on StatCrunch first just because it's, it's the quickest, 0 and 1, we're going to go in between on top. Put the left boundary in, negative 0.61, put the right boundary in, 1.29, and we're done. That's the probability and showing the in-between. Now let's do it kind of the longer way using the, the table. We need negative 0.61 first, so negative 0.601, so 0 0.2709, 0 0.2709, that's uh, z equal to negative 0.61. That's to the left, remember. 
Okay, that'll be our left boundary. Now the other one, 1.29. Go down to 1.29. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, point nine zero one five. Point nine zero one five. That's for z equal to 1.29. So, in order for us to find this red portion, we have to take the furthest to the right, the z score furthest to the right there, which is 1.29, and subtract, take its area, which is all the way to the left, right, and subtract off the z score of point, or the z score of point negative six one. So we take the calculator, and we take point nine zero one five, subtract off. 0 0.2709, 0 0.6306, 0 0.6306, so we'll have a little bit of a error tolerance there when you're doing the table versus when you're doing this. Has the correct answer, right? Or the one they're looking for more. Okay, so you kind of see that stack crunch is probably the way to go here, but that's how you use the table. Now let's look at one last problem. Let's look at this problem here. It says, assume the random variable x is normally distributed with a mean of 51, a standard deviation of 8. Compute the probability. Be sure to draw the normal curve with the area corresponding to the probability. So they want the probability that x is less than or equal to 48. So again, here we are not talking about a standardized normal z-score. I think if you go in and get the help and show example, they're going to standardize it for you. So they're going to show the z-score and you're going to standardize it, which is fine. The 45 in this example, you standardize it, take x equals 45 and you get a z-score and then you find the answer. But in technology, we're actually just going to put it into StatCrunch. So here, you'd find the z-score, go to the chart, and then find your answer to the left. Because that's what z-score is doing, is standardizing your value of 45. And I suppose I could do that if I had a, a, ch a chart. Uh, maybe I can get one from the other one, so we'll try that. But 48, the probability of x is less than or equal to 48. So I'm going to go to StatCrunch and do this. All I need to put in my mean now of 51, my standard deviation of 8. It's a standard one up here, and I need to go less than or equal to 48. So what StatCrunch does is does the calculations of standardizing it and, and finds the probability for you and leaves it in this mode, right? 0.35383. There's the probability, and there is my chart mean is 51 and 48 is to the left of it a little bit and then the area is shaded. Now let's say we wanted to actually find the z-score of this and calculate it out by hand. We need the formula here. The z-score is x minus mu over the standard deviation. So our z-score would be equal to 48 minus 51 over 8 get the calculator, 48 minus 51, hit equals or put those in parentheses, divided by 8. There's our z-score, 0, negative 375. Let's go get a table now. Looks like this problem had a table. I'll click that. There's the, the normal table negative point zero three seven five negative point three zero seven five negative point three and I go to seven five so I gotta go to seven zero zero one two three four five six seven and that's eight so it's in the middle between there so my area to the left of that 3557 and 0 0.3520. It's in the middle between those two values right here. So the middle value would be approximately 3. Point, I don't know, 5 
This is 57 and 20. So basically, I guess you could add them up. And divide by 2. 77 divided by 2 goes into 3 times 38. So 3.538. And here's what I got. 0.3538, right? Would be this. So using the table isn't, isn't going to maybe get you the exact answer. And here it got me pretty close, right? But using StatCrunch is going to get you the answer more closely what they're looking for. So, but that's what it means when you go to the change to the z-score. You use the z-score because you're standardizing that data so that you can look at the table and get your probability. StatCrunch does all that for you when you enter your data.